Good morning, this is Erica with Launching Legacies. Welcome to our daily devotional. Today we are going to continue our devotional on lawful orders. And today we're going to talk about what happens when we overrule lawful orders. So um, let's get started. We're going to look at Numbers, the 20th chapter, and um, the 8th verse. So what's happening here is... Um, Moses and Aaron are in the wilderness. Um, there's no water for the people. There's, uh, Miriam has died. And so things are getting, are bleak. And so the people are disturbed or distracted in some manner. And so that's becoming a problem. And now Moses, um, God is going to speak to Moses and Aaron and tell them what to do about this situation that the people, the children of Israel are in. Now be mindful. They've been in the desert for a long time. Um, they've been complaining for a long time. That's kind of what they did well. And and Moses has been leading them through this complaining and through their back talk and all their crazy stuff for a while. So he's used to them uh, having something to say all the time. And they don't have an absence of words this time. But again, Moses is grieving. His sister has just died. Um, and I think he's a little bit tired of the children of Israel. It's kind of demonstrated in the in the. Uh, passage that he gets a little bit weary of them and kind of frustrated with them but still he's given a lawful order and remember that's what this devotional is set towards is that when we're given a lawful order from God like uh, uh, some told to do something from God we need to go ahead and do it well um, for some reason Moses overrules it and we're gonna read the passage to find out let me just clean this off here I don't know if that helps it looks like it's a little foggy okay um, all right. Now we're at numbers, the 20th chapter, and we're going to look at the eighth verse. And so it says, uh, God is speaking here and he says to, um, Moses and Aaron, he says, you and Aaron must take the staff and assemble the entire community as the people watch, speak to the rock over there and tell, and it will pour out waters for you. Okay. Notice he says, speak to the rock. You will provide enough water from the rock to satisfy the whole community and their livestock. So Moses did as he was told. Well, he does a portion of it, right? He took the staff from the place where he was kept before the Lord. Then he and Aaron summoned the people to come to and gathered at the rock. He says, listen, you rebels. Now, that doesn't sound like part of the instructions, but, <laughs> but so we can find that Moses is a little bit disturbed. He says, listen, you rebels, he shouted. Must we bring you water from this rock? So now he's like, do we have to do this? Do we have to bring water from this rock? Then Moses raised his hand and struck the rock twice with the staff and the rock gushed out water so the entire community and their livestock stock excuse me drank their fill but the lord said to Aaron to Moses and Aaron because you did not trust me enough to demonstrate my holiness to the people of Israel you will not lead them into the land i am giving you them this place was known as the waters of meribah because that means arguing. Meribah means arguing. Because the people of Israel argued with the Lord, and there he demonstrated his holiness among them. All right, so let's get back to it. God told Moses, speak to the rock. Moses calls the people rebels, says, look at you hooligans. What are y'all doing? <laughs> you guys are, you guys don't know that God is, is who he says he is. And then instead of speaking to the rock, he strikes it, not once, but twice. And so God is like, okay. So you, I don't, I don't know where things went wrong. I told you to speak to the rock. Instead, you struck the rock. And so the lawful order was to what? Speak to the rock. Take the rod like you did. That was good. And then get into this, in front of this rock and speak to the rock. And then the rock would bring forth all the water that was necessary. But instead, you had a whole narrative. And then you struck the rock two times. And so his response to them was, you're not going, you're not going into this promised land with these people. The land I promised them, you're not going to enter in. Now, mind you, Moses is 120 years old at the at his time of death. So what we know is he had 40 years. He was 40 years old when he left Egypt. He was 80 years old when he left the desert. He stayed in the desert for 40 years. He was 80 years old when so he's 80 years old when he goes to Egypt and tells them to set his people free. And we know he wandered in the wilderness for another 40 years. That makes him 120 years old. At 120 years old, this man has dedicated near his whole life to having these people be rescued from Egypt and he has to watch them go in or not even watch them go in he stays on a mountain and does not enter in 
because he didn't follow the last lawful order. It was that simple. Speak to the rock. But his anger was fueled against those people and he struck it instead of speaking. And that was a problem. And because of that problem, um, he didn't get what God had promised him. And it's a disappointment, you know, because it was an easy thing to just speak. And so this is our encouragement or lesson from this from this word is that when God tells us to do something, it's important that we listen and do what he's saying to do, despite the circumstances, right? The people were complaining and he was tired. He was grieving because his sister had just passed. But does that give him a reason not to do what he was supposed to do? Well, no. He needed to still follow the directions that were given him, and he didn't. And so he suffered because he didn't get to go in. He didn't get to enter into the promised land. Joshua and Caleb led the people into the promised land. Moses and Aaron didn't. And it's frustrating. But it's a real life experience for many of us. If God is telling us to do something, we want to be very keen to listen and do what he says. Because our lives are different if we don't. Well, that's something to think about for today. And until tomorrow, I hope that you're blessed. Please pray for us. We're praying for you. And until then, uh, be blessed.